Welcome, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening uh, to How to Be a Good Ally. Uh, we are very lucky to have uh, two fantastic ally reps, uh, Emma Donovan, Tara Spires-Jones, uh, and Jonathan McBride, and my pronouns are he, him. Um, we hope you have a lovely evening. Uh, the Staff Pride Network is for LGBT plus colleagues and allies, uh, staff, PhD, uh, PhD students, and we support uh, staff and students at the University of Edinburgh. Um, I will thank everyone involved in organising uh, this event. Um, thank you. Over to, to Siobhan. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, Siobhan, um, or show uh, Carol, and my pronouns are they, them. And I'm just doing a tiny bit of introduction at the start of this to say that welcome to this event. Um, Emma was very keen to do this event today because it is International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, Intersexism or Intersex Phobia and Transphobia. Now, it has additional things being added and at the moment people are are encouraging us to add lesbophobia and that would make the acronym IDAHOBLIT um, which um, for those who don't know it's a it's an acronym that started as IDAHO and has just grown to make it more inclusive over the years um, and more information on it can be found from the website 17may.org which is uh, where a lot of the history of it is kept. Now I'm just introducing the event because really Emma is the one who has been pulling this together. But um, so in just a moment, I will pass over to Emma and our other panelists and ask them to introduce themselves. Um, I will be around in the chat if people have any questions about anything or any thoughts about how they have uh, about, about questions about resources or things they'd like to know more about. And I can try and point people in the right direction if you have any questions. Uh, but um, Emma will be taking it from here. Cool, thanks Siobhan. All right, hello everyone. Um, so I am Emma Donovan, pronouns she, her. Welcome to my event, um, How to Be a Good Ally. So uh, this is hosted by one of Staff Pride Network's ally reps, yours truly, Emma Donovan, and there's the other ally rep, Tara, who is in this event as well. Thank you for coming. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, um, I work in Edinburgh University. Um, most specifically the School of History, Classics and Archaeology as the school's modern apprentice. Um, and I am the Staff Pride Network's ally rep, meeting secretary, Instagram moderator and events team member. <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about how to be a good ally in light of today, which is of course Ida Hobbit, um, and a perfect time for us all to come together and learn about raising awareness. So I will just jump right on into it with the first tip. <laughs> So number one, coming in loud and clear. So we need to be visible. Um, so make sure your friends and colleagues know that you are a straight ally and make yourself vis visible to others that need your support. So being visible is the best thing you can do as an ally because it makes LGBT plus people in the community feel less alone. Um, and that's always a good thing. Um, LGBT plus discrimination unfortunately still exists in many places throughout the world. And you letting them know that you accept them, support them and are there for them will mean more than you ever know. The LGBT community needs a strong network of support and you can make that happen. Number two, be open to learn, listen and educate yourself. So you need to develop a true understanding of how the world views and treats the LGBT plus community. Be open, listen to your friends' personal stories and ask any questions you might want to know politely. So this could be things like look, looking up and learning about the LGBTQ plus history, terminology and the struggles that the community still faces today. Um, start by learning the origins of pride and any key LGBT issues. For example, in America, June 28, 1969 was when the Stonewall riots sparked the beginning of the LGBT movement. Number three, be willing to talk with the LGBT plus community. So the LGBT plus community um, will be happy to communicate with allies if you're always respectful towards them and give them the time of day. So they will realize that you are genuinely interested and want to learn more about how to help support the community. This can be effective in forming new friendships with people in the LGBT community and reassuring them that you will always fight for their corner. 
Number four, I don't know why recognize is in capitals, but we're going to go recognize, <laughs> recognize your privilege and use it to achieve positive outcomes. So you as a straight ally have an unbelievable amount of privilege considering you never went through any of the struggles the LGBT plus community did. As myself, I can, I can vouch for that. So take this into consideration, be passionate towards them and strive to achieve positive outcomes for the community. This could be attending LGBT training at your work or getting yourself involved in a local network, which main aim is to fully support and empower the community. Number five, don't assume. So if you don't know something, ask. Don't assume and blur out something that could be offensive and hurtful to others. Um, always be considerate and make sure you're asking someone from the community in a respectful way. So think before you speak is always good advice. I'm sure many of you have heard that before. Um, it really does work wonders when it comes to something you're not fully clued up on. Um, if you feel like you don't know enough to speak on any topic, go reflect and educate yourself and produce an accurate answer that will support the community. If you don't know someone's pronouns, just ask nicely. Although if someone refers to them as their incorrect pronouns, um, they will be quick to correct them and you'll soon know which ones to use and the ones that they're comfortable with. Number six. Um, so another one on the list is expand your reading and film slash TV shows choices. It's quite a good one. So allies should regularly become clued up on many LGBT issues by watching TV shows and films. Reading any relevant books could also educate allies instead. Allies and allies. Instead, there are an uh, array of books available to buy. So I personally, as an ally, have watched the films The Half of It and A Secret Love on Netflix. So they're very eye-opening and informative, really good watch if any is um, fancy watching them. Um, I also have um, the Bible New Testimonials um, and also the, the Bible Volume 2, <laughs> um, which is the further original essays and narratives about bisexuality book, um, which I have yet to read, but very excited to read. Um, and I have also recently read They Both Die at the End, which is such an amazing yet heartbreaking book, uh, which I highly recommend. Number seven. Confront your own prejudice, prejudices and unconscious bias. As an ally, you need to consider your unconscious bias and any prejudices you might feel towards the LGBT plus community. So confirm which of these prejudices are wrong and fix them. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, number eight, know that your pronouns and language matter. So accommodating um, the LGBTQ plus people's names and pronouns are no different to someone changing their nickname. So if you're unsure of someone's pronoun or label, just ask them politely. So when meeting new people, try to include inclusive language into your regular conversations by using gender neutral terms. Most people use the word partner to address their boyfriend or girlfriend, which is both gender neutral and inclusive. Number nine, be aware that you will overstep the mark sometimes and just apologize and ask for guidance. So you may address someone with the wrong pronouns. Um, they will correct you and this will enable you to ask them their preferred pronouns and you can remember this for the next time that you chat with them. So always apologize for your mistakes and consider that person's feelings when you address them with the wrong pronouns. Being sympathetic and understanding shows you didn't mean to use the wrong pronouns and you're determined to fix that mistake. Number 10, encourage inclusive inclusion in activities and avoid stereotypes. So to be a good ally, you need to encourage inclusion in every aspect of your work, whether that be asking for help, chatting to someone from the community or inviting them to any work events. So avoid any stereotypes that could be damaging to the community. Negative stereotypes are often associated with homophobia, lesbophobia, gayphobia, biphobia or transphobia. However, positive stereotypes or counter stereotypes also exist. So just be aware. Um, number 11, combat any anti-LGBT plus jokes or comments and let your friends and colleagues know that you find these very offensive and discriminatory. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Again, um, stand up for the community and let colleagues know that using the slurs homophobic language such as you're so gay or that's gay um, and even bullying is completely unacceptable and discriminatory. Number 12, so a big one, defend the underrepresented LGBT plus community and empower them. So for me anyway, um, I admire and look up to the LGBT plus community. I always want to empower them and never to tear them down. I will fight for their rights and always defend negative and offensive language. So for example, you could empower them by sharing informative posts about how to be a good ally within the community. 
educational posts about LGBT plus struggles and history and even just letting them know you're there for them and you will stand up for them and their rights no matter what. If you're in a challenging and dangerous situation with someone in the LGBT plus community, the best thing you can do is be vocal, powerful and stand up for them. Let the bullies know that what they are doing slash saying to this person is unacceptable and wrong. Number 13, follow the lead of your fellow LGBT plus peers. So your LGBT plus peers are great leaders and innovators just like you. You as an ally may learn something from them. Take notes. Again, another useful tip. Pronouns. So I've added a few bullet points in here. So it could be adding your pronouns into your social media bios, which I know a lot of people do. Um, also adding in your pronouns to any work platform if possible, say if you use Teams or any other work platform like Slack or something like that. Um, add your pronouns to any video calls with colleagues. As you can see, a few people like the panelists have their pronouns uh, next to their names. Um, and also add your pronouns to your email signature, which I'm sure probably the majority of people at my work do, which is really good. Um, so pronouns are becoming the new norm, as they should. People should have the opportunity to let their peers know their pronouns, encouraging them to use them. This makes them feel more comfortable and confident as you're referring to them as their authentic self, and more people know what their pronouns are when in conversation with them and other people. Instagram has recently updated their app, giving their users the option to add their pronouns in their bio, which you could already do this if you were using the text bio, but they have now accommodated a specific section just for pronouns, which displays next to your name on your profile. Go inclusivity. <laughs> Staff Fair Network is currently communicating with teams to try and get users um, a pronoun bio function on their profiles. So although you can currently write in your status your pronouns, so e.g. mine or she, her, um, and it displays when you click on their profile or just hover over their picture. Right, so how can you become more involved? So I've made this very aesthetically pleasing graphic. So um, join, firstly, join the Staff Pride Network and become more active as an ally. Um, become an ally rep in the future, whenever Tara and I step down, don't know when that'll be. Um, outreach, um, carry out activism via social media or in person. Um, and also start your own ally network with other friends and colleagues. However, I'm aware that some people in this um, event aren't from the University of Edinburgh and that's cool. So if you're not from the university, you can find a network that you can join and become more involved in. So activism uh, for LGBT rights is always important and always admired. So carry out any social media outreach, whether it be following LGBT networks, posting things you find shed a positive light on the community and just be yourself. <laughs> So um, I also have some resources here. So two of these, I'll circulate these, um, these slides at the end of the event so you can access these. Um, so they're actual just two Facebook um, resources and they have really good informative graphics that you can see. I've got some examples on the screen here. Um, so yep, these are some very useful resources that I came across on Facebook. So you can have a look through and even share yourself if you see fit. So yep, these are the examples over here. Um, and lastly, any questions? I feel like I've been rambling for a while. Um, so Siobhan uh, will open the floor to any questions you may have and myself or the Staff Pride Network members will do, do their best to answer them. So over to you Siobhan. I would just mention someone has, as, has noted in um, the chat that um, you can only update your pronouns on Instagram within the app if you're using it on the web platform. You oh. can't add your pronouns to your profile yet. But as right. the, yeah. the majority of people will use it on the app. Yeah, so that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I didn't know about the website. So yeah, so I feel like um, most people use the app. Um, so if you have the app, it's quite cool. I could just see she, her next to my name, which is quite cool. Um, yes. But yeah, hopefully they, um, they make it so that it's on the web as well. And then everyone yes, and if anyone has any um, other questions, they can... Uh, let me know um, and it also has to be a new the the, the, the most up-to-date version of the Instagram app because if you've got an old phone yeah. with an old version mm -hmm. you also still won't have it but it's still a step in the right direction um, yeah, I just like to quickly say that um, for me as someone who doesn't use pronouns that are obvious from looking at me I don't always feel comfortable correcting people but if someone else can correct them who's nearby and an ally that can make my life a lot easier because sometimes it can feel quite intimidating because I'm not sure if someone's using them incorrectly. 
deliberately or by accident and uh, to have someone to st step in and say actually shows pronouns are they them um is fantastic and then someone and then i'll know that someone means it if they just say the same sentence again they say sorry repeat the sentence again with the correct pronouns and move on <laughs> which is usually about the right level of of interaction for, for me on that um, but if anyone has any questions, they can either raise their hand or they can type something in the chat, or if they want to be anonymous, they can use the Q&A function. I'm here for all of your options. While we wait, could I say hello and a couple of words? Is that all right, Joe? Of course, yeah. please introduce yourself, Tara. Thanks. Hi, I'm Tara Spires-Jones. I am very proud to work with the Staff Pride Network. I'm a professor here of neuroscience. And I just wanted to say, as a, as a person, I have always been a huge supporter, of course, of the LGBT plus community. I grew up in rural Texas, where it was for some of my friends, a not very safe place to be themselves. So I really appreciate the work that's done here. And I hope that we can keep making progress for all of us. But also just as a, as a professional, I'm a scientist and I find the more ideas and perspectives and diversity that we have in our work, the better it is for our progress. And so I really appreciate our grouping that has so many people from diverse backgrounds, from all different kinds of, you know, from the LGBT plus community, from different countries. And I think that it's just a wonderful, inclusive community. Not always. I've come into a, a, across a couple of things where I've had to step in as a manager or a supervisor, a person who, for example, transitioning and changing their pronouns was running into some trouble with a staff member. So it's not perfect. So I'm hopeful that we can, as allies and as a network of all of us, help people in the university feel more like it's their home because it's a real loss for us as well as for them if we can't make people feel welcome. Yes, that's fantastic. Thank you, Tara. Um, I'm just going to answer. We've got a question in the Q&A where someone has asked, how would you recommend inquiring about somebody's pronouns? If I don't know them, I'll stick to they, them until I know. But I was wondering if there's a more or less universal way to do that sensitively, which is a really good question. I. I tend to, when I'm meeting someone, say, hi, I'm showing my pronouns are they, them, and and just keep going. Um, I'm in a lot of queer spaces, and generally we just say, what are your pronouns? Um, uh, when I met someone, I wasn't sure of their pronouns. I was like, hi, I'm show. my pronouns are they, them, what are yours? <laughs> it's it's um, It generally is not something you do as a sensitive thing you ask people it the same way you'd ask them their name and um, i just also like to say that they them can feel really invalidating to some trans people who are binary trans that's um people who are trans men or trans women because if you use they them pronouns for someone who is binary trans it's like you're not acknowledging the gender that they are so they them seems like the safest thing until you give it a little bit more thought and move past that. So it's worth knowing about the fact that it's better to just try and get the pronouns straight from the start. And a good way of doing it is to always share your own. Yeah, thank you. And you'll notice I forgot to share my pronouns when I said hello. So I'm she, her, I'm really sorry. I always put it in my email signature and then I forget when I speak. But I find that that's one of the things I really like about Zoom is you can, if you can get it at the beginning, then it's, it's out there and visible. Um, and I'm trying now every time I meet a new class when I'm teaching to introduce myself with pronouns because I'm hopeful that that makes the students feel happy to introduce their pronouns if they want. Nobody took me up on it this year when I said on Zoom you can put your nickname or your pronouns or anything and I put my pronouns and none of my students took me up on it but you know maybe next year. It, I think it's good to just even make that space because even if someone doesn't feel ready or, or fully safe to share at that moment it it creates the sense that that moment will come, um, which I think is quite positive. Um, um, and sorry if I'm distracted, there is a cat trying to throw something down my radiator. He ran past the screen earlier. I was I was just going to make the point that pronouns are, are a very useful thing to be used anyway, because in business communications for decades, it's been a problem that, that especially women are generally just if they don't have specific names or are just assumed to be men in quite a lot of situations or vice versa. So it's very it's very useful for professional communications to make it clear what pronouns you want to be used in those communications. So it's actually 
yeah it's not just a trendy thing it's a very useful practical thing to be doing it is very useful it's very practical and also it's um just good it's I feel like it's just good practice and um I think if we just make the pronouns thing happen um that would be really good because I think sometimes the debate around the debate around trans people can focus very much on pronouns and toilets and not about all the other issues so it's quite nice if we just get the pronouns thing done and dusted <laughs> with our allies do you have any advice around conducting research with lgbtq populations when being an ally well that's a really good question that might be a good one for tara to come in on as being more of a researcher <laughs> Well, I'm a researcher. My participants are all um, deceased or flies or cells in a dish, so I don't I don't encounter it very much in my research as participants. Um, psychology colleagues do, though. Where I encounter it is more in students and the sort of research side of, of people that I work with. So I don't have a very good um, answer for that other than being inclusive generally speaking and being as cognizant as you can of people that you're interacting with no matter what their background it is is really good so trying to be as neutral as you can about gender about you know trying not to assume like emma, emma thank you for your tips trying not to assume that you know who someone is or what their gender is 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 probably a baseline and just being kind but sorry i don't have a very good answer for that one <laughs> Oh no, I think I think trying not to assume and being kind are two pretty good starting points um, for all of this. That's that's great advice. Um, I know that um, that trying not to assume is is hard because we've been sort of hardwired to form connections with this assumptions that we make. It's part of us speeding our way through things, but it's actually really good because there's loads of other characteristics we might have assumed about someone that we shouldn't have um that's me putting my i'm co-chair of the disabled staff network how and going someone could have an invisible disability someone could have all these other things as well so it's it's about general inclusivity as well as being a good ally to this community i would like to introduce um one of my lovely panelist guests that i have asked to come along for us so tristan would you like to introduce yourself yes of course hi emma and um, thank you very much for um inviting me along today so my name's tristan um my pronouns are he him um i'm actually here as a student i'm a second year undergrad student and um, i'm studying ancient medieval history although i'm also employed um as a student ambassador in the school of history classics and archaeology um, just touching actually upon the question that was asked with regards to research, um, an issue that I still feel is really quite um, pertinent is drop down menus and choices for selecting gender. Um, all too often um, when I filled in surveys, and this includes people conducting um, research, you're limited to male, female, um, and occasionally other. So I think having far more inclusive options there or even doing away with drop down and just letting people put in their own gender identity um i mean i'm a transgender male i'm very openly transgender male um and personally would rather identify as such um when filling in any kind of form or or giving my opinion um so that's one thing i think is very important to consider when doing um research that's great thanks tristan uh, someone has typed in, uh, Catalina has typed in, great advice, thank you. And I believe that that is directed at Tristan. So thank you, Tristan. Uh, could I ask a question of Tristan? Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, of course you don't have to answer, but Tristan, thanks for coming. And I was just wondering how your experience has been so far. Have you felt uh, as a, a student so far included or have there been things that you could point out to improve upon? Great idea about the drop down menus, that's excellent. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm really pleased to say that my experience so far at the university has been really positive. Um, so I'm a slightly more uh, mature student. Um, so I'm, I'm 29 um, and I came through quite a non-traditional route into education. So I made the decision, um, partly for myself, but, but just being actively involved in my school to be very open um, about my identity as a queer trans man. Um, I've been very involved with my school's Equality and Diversity Committee. Um, and I actually 
took part in um, organizing this year's um, LGBTQ plus History Month event, which was really well um, attended. I think one thing that's made my experience at the university and in my school really positive has been staff engagement. So seeing staff coming along to e &D committee meetings, staff coming along to the event that I ran. Um, so just knowing that there is kind of active participation, um, a desire to educate themselves and be more, I guess, cohesively involved in the, the student experience. Um, so yeah, all of those factors have made my experience um, really quite positive so far. It's just having that, that good relationship with staff. That's great. Thanks, Tristan. I'm just going to come in on the drop down menus for pronouns quickly before we go to the questions. Um, uh, so I'm going to say that um, the Zoom has name change limited and we're trying to improve that. Um, and uh, Robbie was hoping to type an answer to that, but um, it's limited, but we're trying to work on it. Um, so what I was, so what I was going to say about drop down menus is um, advance HE have a really good resource on how to do equalities monitoring. So asking questions like that. And people might be interested to know that um, it is, because it's done in alphabetical order, it says female, non-binary, male, other, please state if you wish and prefer not to say, which admittedly is still probably not enough, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. And um, it also, uh, I like the fact that for almost every category, it has other, please state if you wish, and it's not a compulsory field. And I think that's something we should get into doing more because some people do not want to explicitly state and some people would love you to know. And knowing that people are in different parts on their journey or have different things they want to share and not share is, is really good. So, um, and I'm going to do another question, which is, um, how might I support a bisexual pal who is in a straight relationship? Straight is in adverted commas in that question. Um, just acknowledge that they're bisexual. As someone who is bisexual and was in a relationship that was seen to be straight, it was just nice when people acknowledged that I wasn't, <laughs> um, that didn't try and... Um, sort of take me out of the community that I was in. Because even if you're in a relationship that appears heterosexual, that doesn't, that doesn't change who you are. Um, uh, um, I have a, a, a friend who is bisexual, who for a long time, everyone assumed she was lesbian because she'd only been with women, but she was still bisexual. <laughs> um, Bisexuality is not about who you're with, it's about who you are. So um, making it, so that's the easiest thing is to just acknowledge who they are, don't try and hide it. Um, don't feel you need to send them every bisexual meme. There are some really funny ones. Maybe just read them for yourself, get more of an understanding of the fact that apparently we can't sit in chairs, we always cuff our jeans, um, all these other stereotypes. Um, but uh, don't necessarily feel that your friend has to fit into that. And uh, we'll try and take it from and, and try and take it from there. Um, if anyone has any follow-up questions on that, I'm more than happy to talk about it. I can talk about bisexuality forever, but that's because that's that's my special letter. <laughs> and we've got another question um, which I'm going to move on to, um, which I might ask Jonathan to come in on as a co-chair of the Staff Pride Network, which is. Uh, someone is asking if there's a way the university can encourage more senior members of staff to attend training like this, um, saying that a lot of students and ECRs attend these types of training through choice and they want to make sure that people are doing it in broader categories, um, especially for to protect ECR students, uh, ECRs and early career researchers, ECRs and students and people with protected characteristics to make it easier for them to call people out when they behave badly. And I'm getting distracted by Tara's cat. So Ro Jonathan, please come in. Hi, thanks, Ron. Uh, thanks, Joe. I'm uh, Jonathan. Uh, yes, I introduced myself earlier. If you weren't here, uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, the question is about encouraging senior managers to 
take part in these trainings. Um, so uh, it would be very easy to uh, say how uh, to, to kind of agree straight off and say, yes, it's terrible and they don't and so on. Um, I'm pleased to say that at the last uh, ally training that we ran, uh, we took a different approach where we uh, contacted all the heads of school um, and asked them to um, ensure that senior managers uh, attended and almost all of the schools uh, had senior managers, if not the head, if not the heads of schools themselves uh, at the training. Um, and in terms of, so, so, so we have had some impact. Uh, we meet, uh, Kay, my fellow co-chair and I, Katie, uh, we meet with management. Um, and so the, there's definitely some education there for them. And that's part of what the, the purpose of the Staff Pride Network and the other uh, networks, the Disabled Staff Network and the Race Equality Network um, and the Staff BAME Network and the Women of Colour Network all exist to not only support uh, the staff and students, uh, but also to engage with senior management uh, and educate them and, and try and um, guide the organisation or push uh, uh, as well as guide um, to to be better. Uh, so it's not it's not only training sessions that can make a difference, uh, but it's it's being in that room, uh, talking uh, with those people, having a having a trans person in the room, uh, having a non-binary person in the room, because it's quite possible that a senior manager in their office in old college or. Uh, and going home to their uh, their family and their kids uh, might not uh, have in their own network uh, someone who's uh, bi, someone who's pan, uh, anything other than cis, white, straight. It's quite possible. So that's something that we're able to do. Um, and uh, if you're organising a training session, Email the heads of school, email the heads of departments. That's great. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, we've got uh, another question, which I think is for Tristan. Um, and and it's, it starts off with a uh, general thank you for your presentation and great Q&A. So I thought I'd pass on the congratulations to everyone. Um, and I think this is for Tristan because it's if you feel able to speak on behalf of students at Edinburgh University, if are there any particular areas that staff could give more or better support yes thankfully um, i'm the voice of authority on uh, all students <laughs> no not at all um and i will say as well um like i said um despite my very young face um i am a, a slightly older student so i feel like my experience um was a little bit different coming to university a little bit older um i think you know coming into higher education when you're 17 18 19 and already at quite a vulnerable place in your life um to experience that as an lgbtq plus student um it can, it can be quite a difficult time so i think having and signposting to quite clear support um within your school sort of student support office as well so that students can feel um that they have someone to to reach out to um it's definitely a, a good start um, but a lot of things we've been discussing tonight, so like normalizing the sharing of pronouns, so it becomes just the same as sharing your name at the start of a, a tutorial, um, having more staff involved in events like this or in schools and um, LGBTQ plus history month events, just so that there is greater um, visibility and therefore students will feel more, more comfortable, I think, approaching staff if they, if they do need support. Um, so yeah i think that's kind of the the, the the key point i would make also that you can get rainbow lanyards yes um, and you can have a background with a rainbow lanyard in as being modeled uh two different forms by tara and jonathan um so i think to show that you are an ally to have a have a lanyard that kind of indicates that um 
is 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 it's a small way of making that visible and uh emma has the ally flag <laughs> Um, and Robbie has just posted in the chat the link if you would like one of those backgrounds for your own Zoom meetings or Teams meetings so that you can show within them that you are an ally or part of the network. And I'll just uh, jump in because I went to that site earlier and was looking for it and there's quite a lot of text. Uh, it took me a little time to find, but there's a little link not far from the top that says virtual backgrounds. So if you look for the link that says virtual backgrounds. Has anyone got any more questions? Um, because this has been a really lovely chat and it's uh, really nice that people have felt able to ask us questions. Um, because not everyone wants to ask, uh, answer questions about themselves all the time. But when people put themselves open to be asked questions, please ask us in that context. <laughs> um, I'll take this opportunity that uh, if any ally staff members, uh, and you could be um, LGBT plus uh, in the audience uh, and be an ally, we're all allies here to those character protected characteristics that we do not represent. Um, and. Uh, to uh, there are spaces on the committee at the moment uh, with our uh, show uh, has been our social one of our two social events officers um, for a little while but has the uh, DSN disabled staff network uh, co chair role as well uh, so they have uh, relinquished their social events officer role so if anyone would be interested in helping organize an event like this uh, we would love to uh, tell you more about it. Uh, there's a team of people to uh, contribute uh, and make that happen. There, uh, we're also looking for a new research officer. Uh, Edgar uh, has just finished organising his last event um, this evening, just before this. Uh, so if you are a um, uh, research, uh, researcher, research, uh, early career researcher, academic, um phd student and want to uh, uh help uh, that side of the network engage with uh research uh, research staff at the university um and uh we also have a space for the uh, disability rep uh, on the committee uh of course show has been uh able to act in that role uh, uh on the team but um uh, it would be great to have uh someone now in that role. There's a few little adverts. Uh, I'll say uh, as well, All uh, we have um, one or two allies, but uh, all allies are very welcome to our social events uh, every week. Uh, every Wednesday, one till two, drop in for five minutes or for half an hour. Uh, just uh, listen um, or, uh, or take part if something comes up. Um, it's a really, really good way to learn more uh, and actually put some of uh, this into practice uh, by uh, taking part, by meeting more people. Um, we have a really good uh, cross-section of diversity uh, who come along regularly. So we're really lucky to have uh, to be able to um, uh, hear different views uh, and ideas. Uh, so every Wednesday, one till two, the first Friday of the month after half six is our evening social. Um, and uh, we'll have more events in June. Uh, dates have not been set yet, but we've got um, some uh, uh, events that uh, I'm sure might like to uh, talk about. Also, I'll, I'll pass that over. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've got um, the uh, a Wikipedia editathon, which is still being worked on, which will be on out the history of LGBT organizations in Scotland. We've done previous editathons, uh, one on um, LGBT authors and bookshops and things in Scotland, because of course Edinburgh is home to Lavender Menace, which um, inspired the play Love Song to Lavender Menace. And uh, 
for that event, um, Sigrid and Bob, who founded Lavender Venice, attended and gave a presentation before everyone worked on writing articles to get some more representation on Wikipedia. And our most recent one was in February as part of LGBT History Month or LGBT Plus History Month. And uh, we had for that one, we had um, wonderful speakers from HIV Scotland. Uh, and we had some text from Derek Ogg, who was a fantastic co-founder of um, uh, Scottish AIDS Monitor, among other things. Um, so we could get some really fascinating events and we can put a lot of information out there. And that's a really good spot for allyship is to just be coming to things like that and not just finding out more about our history, but sharing it with the world. And um, we have our Wikimedia in, in residence. There we go. I found the word. A Wikimedia in residence from the university comes along and gives full guidance on how to set up your Wikipedia account and edit and create things. And he'll also give tips on how you connect them to other articles to make sure that more people read them, which is a fantastic tool. And the other event, which is going to be my last event as social events officer, as Jonathan intimated, is um, a sort of lesbian visibility event, but within Pride Month, uh, which we're going to do. Um, and that is uh, looking at, um, we're going to have a TV writer and some other writers who are lesbians who are going to talk about writing their own stories and how it's different when lesbians write their own stories versus when their stories are written by other people, um, particularly straight men, <laughs> as is sometimes the case. And um, it's going to be a really fascinating and fun event. Uh, when we get some dates, we will circulate them. Please come along, find it on our Eventbrite or Twitter. Thanks, Siobhan. Um, I'd just like to, um, just to wrap up then the last kind of 14 minutes of this event, just a wee talk from Tristan, just um, explaining his experiences as a transgender male and anything else he wants to outline he sees fit um so i'll hand over to you again tristan um yeah oh thank you so much emma and um yeah thank you for having me um like i said you know my experience in the university has been incredibly positive um and i'm lucky that i entered university i guess at a time in my life where i felt very comfortable in my identity very comfortable being open about that but of course you know that's not the case for everyone um and i think um students and of course staff um, should and uh, really ought to feel protected. Um, I think it's also important to note, you know, we've discussed um, pronouns quite a, a lot tonight, but not everyone's journey as, is as linear as, as mine was, you know, so I think it's really important that we all um, respect that and respect the individual journeys um, that we're on, because of course we're all um, individual and very autonomous people um, and that we respect um, the individuality of each person's own journey. Um, so come along to events and, um, you know, attend training sessions. There's lots of students like myself who are kind of working um, behind the scenes in equality and diversity committees um, or in different societies to make this place that, that bit more inclusive. So it's really lovely to see um, staff getting involved in that too. Um, so if we can normalize um, conversations like these um, have them more open and um, I think we're I think we're headed in a very positive direction um, so yeah I think that's that's all I've got to say but um, I appreciate you inviting me along as a student and um, just to share a wee bit of my experience. Thank you for sharing it Tristan. Emma do you have any final words as the organizer of this event? Well, I mean, I hope the attendees enjoyed. Um, I definitely enjoyed um, hosting my first event as an ally rep, uh, the first of many more. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just happy how this turned out. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed. <laughs> Can I ask if anyone has any ideas for what they'd like to see from Emma and Tara uh, in future? Uh, any other event ideas, uh, anything you'd like to see them uh, do, uh, then uh, please do uh, pop it in the Q&A uh, or uh, email 
uh, email them individually or staff pride network at ediq.uk. And also there's a feedback form which has been posted in the chat. Please feel free to click on it and give the feedback uh, as uh, Jonathan has said, uh, that will come across. And we also now have all the information on all the many ways you can contact us, follow us on Eventbrite or look at our previous events on YouTube. So please do, please get involved. And um, I will let Jonathan end the event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I just thought uh, I'll have a quick look and um, see if we've got any. We've got a couple of responses uh, into the feedback um, already. Uh, so uh, that's always interesting. And uh, if there's anything more we can add, uh, the uh, oh, essentially saying it's brilliant. Um, but uh, there's um, the diversity of attendees is al always really helpful and where they're from and what they're doing. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, there's staff and students uh, and um, from uh, different parts of Scotland as well. Uh, so it's really great to see, uh, to be able to include people in our events, not only who can just make it to a lecture theatre and the central campus, but uh, from uh, your own homes. Uh, all everywhere. Um, but uh, yeah, just as co-chair of the Staff Pride Network, uh, I'd like to uh, thank everyone in the panel uh, this evening. Uh, Emma did a wonderful presentation. Uh, we're very proud of uh, proud of her uh, while she is with us, uh, and uh, which isn't forever. Uh, but uh, I know, I know. Um, uh, but uh, some more. And not many more months, but yes, well, that's for another time. Uh, Tara, uh, Tristan, uh, thank you for giving up your time uh, this evening. Yeah, thank you uh, for coming. It means a lot. It really does. Um, yeah, Absolutely. so thank you, thank you, everyone. And, and, um, and to Robbie. And to Robbie for basically being how all of our events run. So, yeah. Robbie, give a wave, say hello. You know, how all our online events have run, we, we wouldn't, couldn't have run without you. And um, I'm going to just say thank you to everyone. Thanks for all the lovely messages we've been getting in the chat from attendees. It's really nice to feel this much love at an event like this. So uh, thank you all for coming and um, good night.